Welcome to my channel. I'm glad to have you here. And I appreciate every one of you that comes to watch my videos. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. The first item that I have is an article on Blaze about a Kansas City Chiefs kicker who gave a commencement speech. I'm just going to read it to you. Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker, 28, gave a commencement speech last weekend at Benedictine College, wherein he dared to articulate beliefs anchored in the millennium's old moral teachings of the Catholic Church, now codified in the Catechism and followed by millions of Americans nationwide. The three-time Super Bowl champ drew the ire of radicals in the liberal media and political establishment for doing so, for echoing the late Pope Paul jo John Paul II in noting that abortion, IVF, surrogacy, euthanasia, as well as the growing support for the degenerate cultural values and media all stem from pervasiveness of disorder. The kicker further enraged leftists by celebrating the institution of marriage, the vocation of motherhood, the link between male weakness and cultural dysfunction, the sinfulness of pride and pride month, and by highlighting the incompatibility of President Joe Biden's professed faith and his views on abortion. Now, he was speaking at a Catholic college about Catholic values, but yet he caught flack. So then, someone on a City X account posted, just a reminder that Harrison Butker lives in, and then provided the location where he could be found. That's called doxing. And uh, that didn't go over too well with the Missouri State Attorney General, who is now threatening to sue the city and the NFL because the NFL came also came out against him uh, for their uh, opposition to what he said. So that's the first article. The second article is entitled Global Elites Fear of Democracy is Behind the War on Speech. This is an article in public, and it's written by Michael Schellenberger, who I'm sure by now, if you've been following my daily news clips, you know he's been um, harassed by Brazil for having published the Twitter files. And so I'm going to read you just a little bit of this. Normally, when politicians, journalists, and philanthropists are caught doing something illegal or wrong, they stop. I don't know if that's true. And sometimes they make excuses. But in most instances, the progressive march of history shows that when power pe powerful people are caught doing bad things, they stop. Uh, I don't think that's true. That's not been the case with censorship. Despite repeatedly being exposed for having imposed or demanded ever more online censorship, politicians, journalists, and philanthropists continue to make their demands. From President Joe Biden to the New York Times to George Soros, politicians, journalists, and philanthropists are unrelenting in their quest to control what can and can't be said and heard on the social media platforms. Uh, it's an interesting article. He raises some interesting points. As I point out, there's some things I would disagree with him. I think politicians have always tried to hide their bad acts, and the only time that they... they uh, repent, if you want to call it that, is when uh, it becomes politically impossible for them to continue without doing that. And even then they'll try to remain in office. So <clears throat> this next article is called The Ten Most Common Pre-Hamas Lies, Pro-Hamas, excuse me, Pro-Hamas Lies About Israel. And uh, some of these I'm not quite so sure about, so I highlighted the ones that I feel uh, that I can agree with. Um, students scream that Israelis are settlers and colonists, and sometimes 
yell at Jewish students to go back to Poland. But the Jewish presence in present-day Israel is deeply rooted in ancient tradition. Dating back at least three millennia, the concept of Israel as a distinct Jewish state situated roughly in its current location is ingrained in history. By contrast, the much later Arab invasions of the Byzantine controlled Levant and their arrival in Palestine occurred about 1800 years after the establishment of a Jewish Israel. So, you know, I've been having this discussion on a, uh, or I've been following a discussion on an academic list about when did the Vietnam War start. And one fellow who is Vietnamese posted, it starts, it started when you, when it fits with your narrative, basically. I'm paraphrasing him. Um, he, he said for him, it starts in 1945 when the communists began assassinating nationalists. But of course, others say it started in 1955 and others say it started in 1965 because their focus and their emphasis is on what was going on at that time. And so I commented in that thread that I thought we needed to define first what war is before we can even decide on when a war began. Uh, getting far off topic though. Occupied Gaza. The Gaza Strip adjacent Israel was autonomous. The Israeli border is closed, but so is the Egyptian border. There have not been any Jews in Gaza for many, for, for nearly two decades. And, you know, it's interesting to me how you never hear any complaints about Egypt having closed their border to Gaza and not willing to accept any Gazan refugees at all. And yet they don't catch any flack at all. All the flack goes towards Israel. Why is that? So on April, October 7th, Gaza was not occupied by Israel. It was under the control of Hamas, designated by the U.S. government as a terrorist organization. After being elected to power in 2006, Hamas canceled all subsequent elections and ruled as a dictatorship. Gaza forbids Jews from entering Gaza and has driven out most Christians. Israel hosts two million Arabs, both as Israeli citizens and residents. And they allow people to come in from Gaza to work. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> So <clears throat> it seems to me that the complaints against Israel are misplaced. After murdering, this is called targeting civilians, after murdering nearly 200 Israelis on October 7th, Hamas scurried back to Gaza and hid in tunnels and bases between, beneath hospitals, schools, and mosques. Its pre-planned strategy was to survive by ensuring Gaza civilians would be killed. Hamas has indiscriminately launched more than 7,000 rockets at Israel, all designed to kill Jewish civilians. Outside assessors have concluded that Israel has not inadvertently killed a greater ratio of civilians to terrorists compared to most other urban fighting conflicts elsewhere, and perhaps even fewer than American engagements in Mosul and Fallujah. And you know, this leads me to a side comment about war. <coughs> War is always a bad thing, but we have, eh, it sounds kind of ironic to say it, but we have improved on war to the point where we're killing fewer and fewer civilians, and that's a good thing. If there is going to be a war, and there always will be, until Christ returns, then at least the thing we can do is try to keep the civilian casualties down to a minimum by focusing only on military targets. And I think most of the civilized nations of the world have come to that realization and are fighting that way. And so you see uh, much lower, but not zero, civilian casualties. I think it's impossible to avoid killing some civilians. And there are mistakes that are made all the time, like the uh, relief group that got killed trying to deliver supplies into Gaza. Next thing is protesters are pro-Palestine. Increasingly, protesters make no distinction between supporting Palestine and Hamas. Their chants often echo the original Hamas char eliminationist charter and recent genocidal ravings of its leadership. 
Some protesters wear Hamas logos and wave the terrorist organization's flag. Many cheered the Hamas massacre of October 7th. These are all facts. I mean, you can't argue about the facts. And to my view, from my viewpoint is that these protesters are much like the ones from the 60s who were supposedly anti-war and they were protesting the war, but they were supporting the communists. They openly marched with flags, with, with North, Viet North Vietnamese flags, the communist country, and cheered, Ho, Ho, Ho Chi Minh, Ho Chi Minh is gonna win. That's cheering for the opposition. I don't care how you put that. That's not cheering for no war. That's cheering for the other side to win the war. And to me, that's wrong. It should not be allowed. Israel has not tried to wipe out the Palestinian people in the fashion of Hamas, one state solution plan for Jews. Before October 7th, some 20,000 Gazans a day requested to work in Israel on the correct expectation of much higher wages and humane treatment. If Hamas has come out of its tunnels, separated from its impressed civilian shields, released its surviving Israeli hostages, and either openly fought the Israel Defense Forces or surrendered the organizers of the October 7th massacre, no Gaza civilians would have died. According to Hamas, questionable genocide figures, roughly 4% of the Gazan population died during the Israeli military response to October 7th. At least a third to almost half of those deaths, according to various international observers, were Hamas terrorists. So that would mean about 2% of the Gazan population has died. Just to give you a contrast, in Cambodia, when the communists took over, they killed 21% of their own population. 21%. That's what evil people do. That's not what nations like the United States and Israel do. And people who say otherwise are lying. The last thing that I have for today is something positive I wanted to share with you. This is a post on X, and it's a story about a sheriff's deputy who pulled over a, uh, uh, a female driver that when he noticed that one of the occupants was a child and saw that the child was not properly restrained in the vehicle. And I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. I'll let you read it yourself, but it's a really heartwarming story. Basically, the deputy realized that this woman was under a lot of stress and was having a lot of difficulties and she admitted she couldn't afford a car seat so he called his wife and asked her to bring one and he gave it to her and i just thought you know let's let's end at least one of my uh news clips on a positive note so there's that of course you know i'll put all the links in the description so that you can read them for yourself <clears throat> Lastly, I want to pray for you. I pray that you live an abundant life, that you live a long time, that you're healthy, and that God keeps you safe from harm. I pray that he will do the same thing for every person that you love. But I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will let your request be made known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet out.